the mic to me in the video? <coughs> so, um, pretty much went over this before. Most of you have looked at this and kind of drawn from it or copied it, so I don't know that I have a whole lot to say about this particular design. Again, it's called rotational path because it's surveyed on two different planes and it goes in in two different positions and ends up locking into the interior region without any class on the canines, which helps with aesthetics. Um, Meshwork or, or lattice work up here in front. The question was posed to me uh, through this designing as to you know how big do you leave these windows? Understand that these windows are left for the size of the tooth that's going to go there. Because if you happen to put a tooth there and it falls right over top of one of the struts, you have to grind on that plastic denture tooth to make room for the strut in order to get it down into position. An alternative for that anterior region would have been to use a mesh instead of the uh, open lattice. And therefore, with the mesh, you don't have all the struts in between. Um, the holes that the, the acrylic processes into are much smaller, so you don't have a big bulk of acrylic. Um, and therefore, there's some controversy as to um, the fact that that might not retain as well as a larger amount of plastic. I have used mesh for 20 six years in my practice and I did not have that as a problem so I would not be afraid to use mesh. I didn't really have any guidelines for the size of these windows. Again, it's kind of the size of two, uh, two centrals and two laterals. So the ones on each side would be a little bit smaller. The lab's kind of going to put those in the position for you anyway. As long as you indicate that which type of a mesh you want, in this case, indicating it as an open lattice, they are not going to return it with those exact size of windows that you have left in your framework. They're going to give you what's standard and what they feel is right. So as long as you indicate which type you want, you're going to be okay there. Um, that's about it. Clasping on the posterior region. Um, if you didn't have a height of contour, that supported keep, keeping this reciprocating clasp above the height of contour, then you could have done a plate here as your reciprocation and dropped down and came across. So this could have been plated and this could have been plated for reciprocation with your retentive clasps on the buckle. I think probably one of the more important things to walk away with is what if I get out in private practice, in this case walks in and I can't do a rotational path. I don't remember how to do a rotational path. I don't think about a rotational path. My lab's not capable of giving me a rotational path. Then what am I going to do instead? So what could an alternative design be? Um, I would design... What's that? Refer. Refer. Send them to me. I'll be happy to take their money. Um, no. The, uh, I would do an eye bar on the two canines. Aesthetically not great, but patient may not care, may have a really uh, low smile line and it may not show. That's why you would use the infrabulge class though and come up with the eye bar. I would still do the singulum rest. I would still plate the, the uh, lingual so that I could contain my singulum rest, do an eye bar on each one of the canines, drop back with the exact same design that you have here and when I get to the posterior region, I probably would at that point do an embrasure clasp in here and over here. So I would have a rest, a mesial and a distal rest. I'd have a mesial and a distal rest. I'd have two reciprocating arms on the lingual and I would have two retentive arms on each side on the buckle. So I would pick up a little additional retention by doing an embrasure clasp. It's not that I couldn't do this exact same clasp as we did here. But if I'm going to come in between these two teeth, I'm probably going to take advantage and share the love with these two teeth as well. So I would do the embrasure class. I already said tomorrow we're going to do a maxillary cast, or I'm sorry, we're going to do algemate impressions of our type of dot. So you're going to do um, one maxillary, you're going to do two mandibular. The maxillary is cast, going to be called cast number eight. After you get it done, you're going to mount it onto your articulator. So those coming in tomorrow, bring your articulators. Cast number nine, you're going to take two algae impressions so that we can pour up and have two casts. One cast will be used to draw a design. So future of next week is a 100-point 
exercise again that we will do where we're going to draw the design on task number nine. The design is already drawn for you in your manual, so if you look up cast number nine, you'll see basically what we're going to do, but you'll draw that design. Then you will take the second cast and we will eventually be making a custom tray on it for taking, coming back to the mannequin a week or so from now and, and making a master cast impression using the custom tray. So tomorrow you will make three algin impressions and pour three casts and then mount the upper cast, cast number eight, onto the articulator, and that completes what we're going to do tomorrow. I don't anticipate it taking all day. It may take some of you all day just because of the congestion that's going to happen in the lab and, and trying to get to the vibrators and the vacuum spat machines and stuff, but um, well-organized, well-planned, thought out, you will probably get out of here by noon or shortly after. The... Um, my biggest advice on these little 100 point exercises that we've been doing is that the final project in this class, when, you, when we get to it, the final exam in the sim clinic will be um, a, a cast. You'll walk in, you won't know the cast ahead of time, which one you're gonna get. There will be several floating around the room trying to keep the level of difficulty the same. And you will sit down and design it totally on your own and um, draw the design and then once again make the mannequin head match the type of dot do the rest seat preps on the mannequin so you'll be doing everything that you've been doing except you'll be doing it totally without our help and without our guidance the biggest downfall that i've seen is that as these hundred point projects go along um, 